Okay, let's check out these review materials. Question one, what does an equalizer do? A, it analyzes the sound frequency spectrum for step filtering. B, it increases the sound's amplitude to commercial quality. C, it alters the sound by increasing or decreasing the frequency of the fundamental pitch. Or D, it alters the sound by increasing or decreasing the volume at specific frequencies or set of frequencies. All right, yeah, so the answer was D. It alters the sound by increasing or decreasing the volume at specific frequencies or set of frequencies. Question two, notching refers to which of the following activities? A, turning down all frequencies below or above a certain threshold. B, eliminating all frequencies below or above a certain threshold. C, selecting a single frequency along with a swath of neighboring frequencies for boosting or cutting. Or D, compressing the frequencies below 300 hertz for added clarity. Notching refers to selecting a single frequency along with a swath of neighboring frequencies for boosting or cutting. Question three, if a signal is copied and played back later, then what type of effect is in use? A, reverb, B, delay, C, compression, D, phaser, or E, pitch shifter? You copy a signal and play back later, that's delay which is the progenitor of reverb, which is a delay-based effect that simulates ambience. Question four. Dynamic effect processors include the following. A, reverb, delay, echo, and repeater. B, filter, notch, band, and shelf. C, attack, sustain, decay, and release. Or D, compressor, limiter, expander, and noise gate. It's D. Compressor, limiter, expander, and noise gate are dynamic effect processors. Question five, when adjusting your dynamic processor, you must indicate the amplitude level that turns on the effect. This parameter is known as A, threshold, B, ratio, C, attack, D, release, or E, action time. The answer, of course, is threshold. The volume of the audio has to cross a certain amplitude level before your dynamic processor turns on or off. Question six, how is an expander different from a compressor? A, instead of increasing the differences between loud and soft like a compressor, an expander decreases these differences. B, instead of reducing the difference between loud and soft like a compressor, an expander increases these differences. C, instead of using threshold ratio and release settings, an expander uses delay time and room size settings. Instead of adding to the noise floor like a compressor, an expander increases the signal to noise ratio. And the answer is B. Instead of reducing the difference between loud and soft like a compressor, an expander increases the difference between loud and soft sounds. Question seven, what effect is used to maximize volume on the master channel? A, limiter, B, expander, C, sound exploder, or D, sonic maximizer? A limiter is used to maximize volume on the master channel. Question eight, this method of equalization employs a center frequency, a width adjustment, and an amplitude adjustment. A, pass filter, B, shelf, C, notching, or D, loudness. That's notching. A center frequency, a width adjustment, and an amplitude adjustment. That's a notch. Question nine, which signal processor employs amplitude, threshold, and ratio settings? A, compressor, B, delay, C, chorus, or D, phaser. Amplitude, threshold, and ratio. So the compressor is the right answer. Question 10. This delay-based effect simulates the sound of a room, 
by producing multiple randomized delay repeats. A, delay, B, chorus, C, reverb, or D, gate. To simulate the sound of a room is to use reverb. Question 11. This activity entails adjusting and applying effects to individual audio tracks. A, mastering, B, mixing, C, dithering, or D, processing. Individual audio tracks means that you are mixing. Question 12. What aspect of mixing involves placing sounds left to right across the stereo spectrum? A, mixing, B, mastering, C, processing, or D, panning? Left to right across the stereo spectrum means that you are panning. Question 13. What are the adjustable components of a mix? A, compression, limiting, expansion, and gating. B, ratio, threshold, attack, release, and hold. C, wavelength, amplitude, frequency, phase, and velocity. Or D, volume, pan, dynamics, equalization, and effects. Those are the adjustable components of a mix, volume, pan, dynamics, equalization, and effects. Question 14, what is your primary goal when creating a mix? A, ensuring that all sounds are intelligible. B, devising a sound that has commercial appeal. C, highlighting music skill. Or D, constructing a danceable beat. Your primary goal when creating a mix is making sure that all sounds are intelligible. Question 15, which effects do you employ to simulate the scale and scope of a performance base? A, equalization and compression. B, reverb and delay. C, expanders and gates. Or D, overdrive and chorus. Delays and reverbs give you the scale and scope of a performance base. Question 16, what method of equalization is marked by the attenuation? A, comprehensive, B, subtractive, C, additive, or D, complementary. If you're turning down frequencies, you are using subtractive equalization. Question 17, what is happening when your brain fills in missing sounds with self-generated ones and ignores sounds that exist? A, auditory hallucination, B, tweeter frenzy, C, accommodation, or D, sound mirage. That is C, this is called a combination. Question 18, what is a rough draft of a mix called? A, working copy, C, source study, or D, mix down? Well, you need to make a mix down, but the right answer here is a working mix. You create a mix and you listen to it on as many loudspeaker sources as possible. A laptop, a telephone, a hi-fi, in a car. That's your working mix. How do you avoid hearing fatigue and accommodation during long mix sessions? A. Take frequent breaks. B. Listen at or below 30 decibels. C. Increase the amplitude of mid-range sounds. Or D. Turn off your drum tracks. The answer, of course, is to take frequent breaks. If you're exposing yourself to high sound pressure level, you are going to experience hearing fatigue and the peculiar phenomenon of accommodation. Question 20, what aspect of your mix is being described when some sounds play leading roles and others play supporting roles? A, dithering, B, perspective, C, sound hierarchy, or D, intelligibility? In order to create a coherent mix, you have to organize your sounds into a hierarchy. Some play leading roles, some play supporting roles. Vocals are usually up top. Background sounds are designed to support and prop up and highlight that lead vocal or lead instrument. That's your sound hierarchy. Question 21, what is happening when one sound covers up and renders inaudible another sound of similar frequency? 
A, masking, B, covering, C, compressing, or D, phasing. If a sound is covering up another sound of similar frequency, that is masking. Often occurs between the kick drum and the bass guitar, or guitar and piano. What is the first step you should perform when mixing? A, apply effects to your lead sounds. B, configure your bass tone. C, organize and label your tracks. Or D, compress your kick drum. Now, strategies vary, but all projects could use organized and labeled so that you can better make sense. Question 23. You should use different reverb settings for each sound in your mix. That's definitely false. That is terrible mixing advice. Your band should probably be in one room with itself. Question 24. What is the physical phenomenon that results from the interaction of a conductor and a magnetic field? A. Electromagnetic induction. B. Variable capacitance. C. Voltage induction. Or D. Amperage. A conductor and a magnetic field that produces electromagnetic induction. The operating principle of a dynamic microphone. Question 25. If a microphone has active circuitry, then this power source must be engaged. A. Capacitor power. B. Power assist. C. Phantom power. Or D. Magnum power. Now it sounds equally made up as magnum power, but phantom power is the right answer. Mixing boards often have a phantom power button that powers your active circuitry, like a capacitor slash condenser microphone. Question 26. This type of microphone is exceptionally durable. A, condenser, B, electret, C, ribbon, or D, dynamic. If you drop a condenser or a ribbon microphone, they are likely to break. But a good old fashioned handheld dynamic microphone, they are quite sturdy. So you should still not drop them. Question 27. Which polar response pattern listens in one direction? A. Omnidirectional. B. Hypercardioid. C. Shallow lobe sensitivity. Or D. Longitudinal cardioid. A polar response pattern out of this list that listens in one direction is hypercardioid, which is a focused version of cardioid or unidirectional microphone. Question 28. Dynamic microphones are also known as blank microphones. A. Cardioid. B. Voltage. C. Maximum strength. Or D. Moving coil. Perfectly describing the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction is moving coil. Moving coil microphones is a synonym for dynamic microphone. Question 29. The physical phenomenon of variable capacitance occurs when A. Phantom power is introduced to the circuit. B. Space age polymers are buried in zinc mines. C. A magnetic field is perturbed by a conductor for the purposes of sound capture. Or D. Thin metallic plates are wired together with a battery and placed in proximity to one another. D. Is variable capacitance the operating principle of a, co of a condenser microphone? Two thin charged metallic plates placed in proximity to one another, maintaining a static voltage. If you change that voltage, you get an analog audio signal. Question 30. Which microphone technique captures the scale and scope of the performance base? A. Close. B. Accent. C. Middle side. Or D. Ambient. If you have your microphones way back from the source, and they are hearing the reflections from the walls and other surfaces before the source sound, then they are capturing ambient audio. A good way to create natural reverb. The microphones are far away from the source. Question 31. What are microphones? A. Transponders. B. Transducers. C. Condensers. Or D. Oscillators. Microphones are transducers. They convert one form of energy into another. 
Question 32. Which type of microphone requires power from the mixing console? A. Dynamic. B. Cardioid. C. Condenser. Or D. Moving coil. The type of microphone that requires power from the mixing console is a condenser mic. Question 33. Which type of microphone is good at close range and at a distance? A. Dynamic. B. Ribbon. C. Laser. Or D. Condenser. Good old condenser microphones. Good at a distance or at close range. Dynamic microphones are not very effective at a distance. Question 34. This type of stereo array places the mic capsule over top of one another so that they occupy roughly the same place in space. A, middle side, B, coincident, C, near coincident, or D, spaced pair. You got two mics, and you place their capsules very close to one another, basically one over top of the other, then you have a coincident array. It's a good way to capture stereo because it is mono compatible. You can take that stereo signal, convert it back to mono, and there is no phase cancellation issues. Question 35. What principle of miking is indicated by diaphragm size? A. The larger the diaphragm, the drier the sound. B. Large diaphragms are good for bass. Small diaphragms are good for treble. C. Large diaphragms are good for treble. Small diaphragms are good for bass. Or D. The diaphragm size of a microphone has no bearing on the quality of audio. Well, it should be obvious. If you have a larger diaphragm, in your microphone, it's better at capturing bass frequencies, which are larger waveforms. Question 36, what is distant miking? When is distant miking employed? A, microphones placed three feet or more from the source when the voices or sounds of an ensemble are to be recorded simultaneously. B, microphones placed one foot or less from the source when the voices or sounds of the ensemble are to be recorded separately. Or C, microphones placed at a distance sufficient to capture the room reflections louder than the source when ambience is needed. Or D, microphones employed by a soloist when a specific sound must soar above the ensemble. Is three feet or more away from your source and whenever you want your voices and sounds of the ensemble to be recorded simultaneously, usually so as to capture the blend. Question 37. In what region of the sound frequency spectrum is the male speaking voice to be found? Upper bass, low mid-range, upper mid-range, or treble? Men's fundamental tones are in the upper bass. Question 38, which type of microphone is preferred for recording speech? A, condenser, B, dynamic, C, ribbon, or D, shotgun? The answer is condenser microphone. It is the preferred microphone for capturing speech. Question 39, which audio signal deficiency results in the recorded speech having lackluster consonants? A, weak above 600, B, strong above 600, C, strong below 100, or D, weak below 250. If it's weak above 600, then the part of speech known as consonants are not well captured. Letter Bs, letter Ps, letter Ts, Ss, Bs, Ks, those sounds, those are consonants. If your audio is weak above 600, then they will not be sufficiently captured. Question 40. To which RMS reading should the amplitude of speech be balanced? A minus 12, B minus 14, C minus 18, D minus 28. Around minus 18. Between minus 18 and minus 24. Unlike pop music, which can be around the minus 14 to minus 12 range. Speech is not as loud. If you attempt to master speech like you master pop music, 
then you'll get an artificially loud bass boost that makes the speech sound awkward and the mid range becomes too loud. Also making the speech sound awkward. Question 41. This microphone pickup pattern detects sound coming from all directions. A, omnidirectional, B, hypercardioid, C, cardioid, or D, bidirectional. It's coming from all directionals. That is omnidirectional. Question 42. Inflection details this aspect of speech. A, the way words are emphasized. B, the way words are adjusted for pitch. C, the way words are paced for speed. Or D, the way words are masked by a frequency response. If we're talking about inflection, we're talking about the way that words are adjusted for pitch. Question 43. If no pop filter or windscreen is available, this mic technique can be used to avoid unseemly mouth noises and breathing sounds. A. Attenuation desk technique. B. 45 degrees off axis. C. Distant miking. Or D. Reverb and compression. Yeah, if you don't have a pop filter, just turn the microphone 45 degrees and speak across the pickup pattern. Question 44. The female speaking voice lives in this part of the sound frequency spectrum. A, upper bass, B, low mid-range, C, upper mid-range, or D, treble. The fundamental tones for the female speaking voice are in the low mid-range. Question 45. What is the frequency range for the female speaking voice? 100 to 1000 hertz, 80 to 240 hertz, 140 to 500 hertz, or 1000 to 2560 hertz. Most, but not all, women speak somewhere between 140 and 500 hertz. And finally, question 46, what is the frequency range for the male speaking voice? 100 to 1000 hertz, 80 to 240 hertz, 140 to 500 hertz, or 1000 to 2560 hertz. Most, but not all men speak somewhere between 80 and 240 hertz. Okay, good luck on the test. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. True is